Hello everyone, welcome to week 4 lecture videos. Our today's topic is capital budgeting methods. So we will be basically discussing about different capital budgeting techniques and their advantages and disadvantages. So we will be covering two chapters today, chapter 5 and chapter 6. And our main focus will be the net present value that we have started discussing in week 2. A campaign is shareholders prefer to be rich rather than poor. Everybody understands that. Therefore, shareholders want the firm to invest in every project that is worth more than its cost. The difference between a project's value and its cost is its net present value. Companies can best help their shareholders by investing in all projects with a positive NPV and rejecting those with a negative NPV. In Chapter 5, we start with a review of the net present value rule that, as I already mentioned, we started discussing in Week 2. We then turn to some other measures that companies may look at when making investment decisions. So basically, we will understand NPV methods and we will also talk about book rates of return, payback period and internal rate of return, their advantages and disadvantages, and we will also discuss capital rationing in this chapter. So first of all, you understand that NPV and the cash transfer between an investment project or return the cash to shareholders has a relationship. First of all, from this figure, you understand that finance manager takes the decision whether the cash generated by a company to be invested in a project or the cash to be returned back to shareholders as dividends. Now, if manager decides that the cash goes to shareholders as dividend, what do shareholders do with this cash? Shareholders definitely invest this money typically in financial assets. Now if manager instead paying dividend to shareholders decides to invest this money in a project, so that cash or that investment is not free of cost, that investment's cost is the rate of return shareholders could earn from investing in this financial asset. So the cost of capital of this project will be the rate of return the shareholders forego for not investing in financial asset, rather for manager's decision to invest in this project. Now any project that finance manager takes, if generates a rate of return higher than the return shareholders could earn from investing in financial asset should be accepted. In other words, any projects, if cash flow is discounted by the shareholders' required rate of return has a positive NPV, then the project will be accepted, otherwise it will be rejected. Three points to be remembered about NPV. First of all is NPV considers time value of money. So time value of money means NPV considers that the dollar today is worth more than dollar tomorrow because dollar today can be reinvested immediately to earn some positive returns. Second point is net present value rule. It only depends on the estimated future cash flow of the project and the opportunity cost of capital. So uh, this rule does not depend on management choice of accounting method or profitability of the project and that's why that's why it's a superior technique. And last of all, NPV has an additivity principle since NPVs are represented in dollar amount. So if we have a couple of projects, then we can simply add up NPVs to get an accumulated value of the projects. This adding up property has important implication. Suppose uh, we have two projects here, project A and project B. So NPV of project A uh, plus NPV of project B will simply the NPV of these two projects. Now suppose project B has a negative NPV. If you take it on to project A, then NPV of project A and B must be lower than NPV of project A. 
Okay. Therefore, you are unlikely to be misled into accepting a whole project, that means project B, just because it is packaged with a good project, project A. So as we shall see, the alternative measures do not have this property. So if you are not careful, you may be tricked into deciding that a package of a good and bad project is better than a good project of its own. Now, how uh, different uh, capital budgeting methods are used in reality? As I said, that apart from NPV, there are some other capital budgeting methods. For example, IRR, payback, book rate of return, and profitability index that we will be discussing in the next videos. So, a survey was conducted among the chief financial officers in the United States that what capital budgeting methods they use in their company for evaluating projects. And this is the survey results. You can see that 75% of the CFOs responded that they use NPB as a capital budgeting method. 76% uh, said that they use IRR. So you can see that NPB and IRR are the most commonly or popularly used capital budgeting methods by the CFOs in the United States. The other techniques are less popular. For example, profitability index and book rate of return has um, uh, responded by uh, only 20% or less than that of the CFOs uh, use these two techniques, whereas payback is used by 57% of the CFOs. So in the next videos, we will be discussing all those techniques and their advantages and disadvantages and superiority of NPV method over the other capital budgeting methods. Thank you.